Hey, welcome to the Oz Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn, and today's fun project, we're gonna put an aftermarket exhaust system on a 2017 Stingray. Uh, my buddy Joe owns the car, it's a seven speed manual. It has active fuel management valves, but it does not have the NPP valves, the nuclear propulsion package valves. Uh, those valves are like dump valves and they open up there at the tip of the mufflers. Okay, I'm going to put a picture in here so you kind of see what I'm talking about. So some cars either have two valves back there or four valves. And I'm going to do a complete separate video on that subject because there seems to be a lot of confusion in the Corvette world, at least online, about what it is and who has it and who doesn't. So I won't bore you with that today, but um, what I will tell you is his car is a seven-speed manual, has the AFM, and if you don't know what that is, the active fuel management, it's a V8 and it'll shut down, the computer shuts down four of the cylinders, they become air pumps, so you get better fuel efficiency when you're just cruising at highway speed and barely tapping that accelerator. So the AFM valves and the MPP valves are metal valves in the exhaust and they open and close through a, uh, a motor, an electric motor there, there's like a solenoid, it's electronically controlled. Anyway, you'll see that in the video um, when we remove these OEM pipes and basically we went up to m m Automotive, Matt up there had a lift so it makes this job much easier than laying on the ground, you could do it. Uh, the system, I know you guys are going to ask, it's AWE, uh, I'm not sponsored, they didn't pay me to make this video or anything like that. I just want to bring it forward to you guys so you know how it's done and uh, the different steps and techniques it takes to get it done. It's fairly simple, there's just some basic components of it. Now, my buddy did change out what I believe GM calls it an H-pipe, um, calling it an X-pipe here for, for the video, but uh, he had a AWE X-pipe, took out the OEM, which has the catalytic converters. You know you need your cats to be road legal, so if you just wanna do track days, there you go. Uh, I'll leave that disclaimer up to you. But anyway, uh, you'll see the steps and the functions. At the end, we'll uh, start the car up, the end of the video, and you'll get to hear what's, uh, what it sounds like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is a, kind of a unique video for me. You guys are used to seeing me get my hands dirty. This one, they got a little bit dirty, not much. I let Matt and Joe do most of the dirty work. I helped here and there, but I was holding the camera and I did a voiceover. So uh, it's my first voiceover, bought a fancy boom mic and everything. So let me know how I did down below for my first time. I hope you enjoy the video. Leave all your questions, comments, and all that fun stuff right down there. Uh, let's get to it and check it out. So with the car up on the lift, let's peek underneath there. You got your exhaust tips right there. And of course the mufflers with the pipe going up over the rear axle. We have a couple of clamps right here that bolt to the uh, X pipe. And then we have the center reinforcement skid plate right there that's held on with like 21 bolts or 22. And there's our down tubes, which is from the uh, exhaust manifold, be your headers. Here are the new exhaust tips the two new AWE mufflers, and then Joe went with the X-Pipe without the cats, which is, of course, for racetrack mode only. So here's Matt. He's removing the uh, bolts from that center reinforcement. Uh, that's my buddy Joe holding the lift right there while I, he's making sure it doesn't move. i um, entertaining these guys, and they're entertaining me. But anyway, uh, Matt here with the impacts taking the bolts out. Now, there's two that you'll leave in. And those are slotted. He's on it right there. Uh, that way you can hold that plate up or it can stay up there by itself, so to speak, while you remove it or install it, which makes it much easier. Now, this is an important part of the car. Make sure it goes back and not only protects it as a skid plate, but it's also structurally uh, keeps the car from twisting. So definitely want to make sure that's torqued correctly. Here we're uh, taking a peek at the uh, OEM X pipe. There's a muffler bracket we'll reuse. And there's some catalytic converters. These are the down ones. And then you have the upstream cats right there, those two cans. So here we're uh, removing the vents. There's two plastic vents to get that lower bumper cover off. There's two sections. You don't need to remove the taillight. 
Now, if you see that red reflector, that horizontal reflector, that just pops out, and there's a couple of bolts back there. But you want to snap these uh, mats reaching in behind, getting these clips released. And you can hear, you know, they're making all kinds of crunchy, crazy sounds. But you need that to uh, get the other clips out, and it gives you a place to grab on when you yank this thing here. You can see he's up there reaching up there kind of tight and squeezing those things and trying to get them released. And here's the bolts. There's four bolts, two behind each reflector. And then it helps to have a couple of guys, you know, if you have an extra hand here when you're yanking this thing off. Just be mindful in the center is the rear view camera right above where the license plate goes. You want to make sure you don't damage that, you know, while you're yanking this thing out. All this stuff goes in much easier than it gets removed. Because it's made to just snap in, basically. So here you go. You twist it and pull. And uh, come right on out. Get that out of the way so you can get to the next step. And there's your actual bumper. That thing that looks like uh, squiggly, whatever, Martian alien creatures. And uh, there's a, between the two mufflers, there's a bracket. And I'm going to show you that. That you have to remove four little bolts. It's no biggie. Here Matt's loosening the clamps. And it can get a little stuck from carbon and rust and stuff. Just beat on it. Here's a slow-mo. You'll see it pop free. Pressure's off. Boom, right there. So undo your mounting bolts for the brackets back there. The, the uh, isolators, rubber isolators, they're just held in with a couple of bolts. And then you wiggle this thing out right over top of the lift. This is where ground clearance really is helpful because you have to kind of pull down on that muffler as you remove it but you got to remove the afm uh connector valve here's i'll show you that in a second here i believe i filmed it um there's a connector to this this is your afm valve active fuel management and uh you got to reach up in there and just unclip that i think i have a shot of matt here doing that on the driver's side and there he is there reaching up and they can be stiff sometimes you know you have to take your time they can be kind of tight but just unplug it, and then we're going to reuse those with the new aftermarket uh, exhaust. So I'm going to show you that clip here where we actually cut these mufflers off the pipe. So once they're out, and we're going to reuse those isolators, those hangers, they call them, those rubber pieces. So up front here, undoing the flange, the uh, stock OEM exhaust flange. There's the other bracket coming off. It's fairly simple. That's that's pretty much all there is to it. If you're not replacing this stock X pipe, then you don't even have to worry about that step. So there's the cats, and Joe's got his hand on the uh, the hanger right there. He's sliding it off, so we can uh, reuse that. So here's the donuts that uh, seal that flange up there up front to the downpipes, and which would be like your headers, and you can reuse these. Just take your time. Matt's using a flathead screwdriver, and he's tapping around. I'm holding the uh, exhaust down for him so it doesn't slide all over the floor. As he pries on it gently, they're made of like a brake pad material. Is the only way I can describe it. And they fit this AWE. I think it's a 3-inch pipe is what, uh, what this is right there. You can see that. So just pop them off. You can order new ones if you want, and you don't have to mess with this step, but... The car's fairly new. They're not old, rusty and crusty and, and stuff. So, uh, Using a rubber mallet, you just tap those on. Be gentle with them. They're a little bit frail. Not, not too much, but they can break. And here, Matt's just bolting up the flange to the downpipe. So there's the new X-pipe going in. Joe's got his hand on it. There's four bolts and nuts with a couple washers. And the donuts are squeezed in between those. So if you're not familiar with how it works, that's that's what's going on there. Basically, it's a seal. It's like a gasket. They call it an exhaust gasket is what it is. So get those on there. And uh, make sure after all this is done that you do put that center reinforcement plate back in, of course. That's real important to uh, stiffen the chassis. All right, so what do we got here? We're bolting in the uh, the rubber hanger. Just a couple of screws. Impact gun makes this job easy. It's going to look angled on the cut. And let's on the listen on all Matt sure here straight. as he talks about cutting off the See how much, you don't have much straight there. See how it starts to bend? Yep. 
right there. So you basically got to cut it, but they don't give you much to grab, do they? Mm -mm. Let's see. Driver's side. Oh, Check so is out. that piece going to slip right over this? Yeah. Okay. The driver's side tube is cut two inches from the end of the weld as seen in figure 14. Yeah, well, that's that's driver's side. That's two right there. And one and a half on the passenger. Yeah, you can see on these here, it, it should slip on it's fine. Yeah. That's good. Now, let me, let me uh, put yeah. some weight on this for you. Yeah. I'm just trying to make a straight cut. Yeah. That tool is super nice to have. That's the like, chain tool. Stand on it. Pipe We're cutter. using that so don't bend it's it. Fast, okay. It's fast. accurate. You could use a sawzall or a hacksaw even. Depends on how much energy you have. And if you ate your weight, meaties or not. And once that cuts through, you just kind of bend it that on and free it. Now we're going to use that pipe that's in his left hand there. So we use those AFM valves. These work nice. Looks pretty good right there. Got it. And this is the passenger side. Same thing. The instructions tell you exactly where to cut. We measure down uh, from the valve. Like, with a sharpie there we go and that's the uh, passenger side so go clean that up deburr the edges makes the pipe slide in and out better so use a little grinder there you could use a file hand file if you don't have air tools all right so this pipe was a little bit out of round as you can see on the left side so Matt got a ball peen hammer and a small dolly there, a piece of metal, just to round it out. Because the, the uh, OEM pipe's going to slip inside there, and then there's that band clamp that goes around it and squeezes it, seals it up. So here we go. There you go. Got it. Bingo. Bingo. No biggie. So it's in. Put a little lube on, the, uh, on that pipe, some anti-seize. That'll help the uh, new muffler slip over top of that. And they have clamps, as you can see. There's clamps on there, so that'll be clamped. And then using the OEM hangers right here, the rubber hangers. You just bolt those back in. Once you get everything lined up, don't forget to plug in the AFM uh, valve. Otherwise, you'll throw, it'll throw a check engine light on you. There's nothing worse than when you do these things and they're not straight. I think it looks like shit yeah, from the back. You got this is where you gotta take your time. Yeah. And you don't really know to that back <laughs> balance sitting, goes off. Until somebody sitting behind you in traffic. Like it's all crooked. All right, now um, here goes the driver's side. No biggie. Now I will have a video out if I haven't put it out yet with the NPP valves and the difference between the AFM valves that this car has. Um, that way you guys will know what's what. It seems to be a lot of confusion in the Corvette world as far as what these exhaust valves do and how they work. So I'm just going to have a whole separate video. This car did not have the MPP and it was very quiet and that's why Joe went with an aftermarket. He wanted a little bit more noise. Um, here's that center bracket and this is a little tricky to line up. You snug them up, you adjust them and this will bring the left side tips even with the right side exhaust tips and you kind of even them up and uh, you can adjust it somewhat that way left to right up and down I remember I bought a 2002 uh, Silverado and I had them exhaust put on and I drove it around for about a month to took it back off it was just it was so, too much yeah, the droning yeah the drone it got to I think the X pipe. Did you have an X pipe on it or? No, just yeah. Just yeah. See, I think the X pipe helps a lot with that cruising when you're cruising. You lined up. Hold on. I don't even know. Hold on. All right. The new, so. you know, the new exhaust system's in. It's time to put the lower valance bumper valance on there, and it just snaps in and is held in with a couple of bolts. There's some. It's pretty flexible. And you just put your bolts in. And you're all done there. Opposite of removal. These clamps are 60 foot pounds and this gun's only 70. So we're, we're the, uh, yeah, you're good. On. That's that's yeah. automatic torquing. Yep. <laughs> that's uh, what is that? Three Ugga Duggas? Yep. All right, so that's the view from the back with the valance on.
Time for the new tips to be put on. How's it look there, guys? Now the new tips have a clamp back there that's already built in there. These are the black chrome ones. They have yeah, polished chrome, bit, you know, shiny they're stainless. They're all go up the same now. And they're just tightened down and you, you m wiggle and move these things to where you need them and then tighten them down and it's, you know, to make sure you got them straight. And look at that. Here Joe's gonna jump in and uh, fire up the car. So we can check out the exhaust, make sure there aren't any leaks. I think that bad boy's rumbling and grumbling pretty good right now. I have to do my uh, exhaust impression. My there you go. <laughs> hey, that's my V8. But uh, I thought the exhaust system was very well made. Uh, I really liked it. I've used other exhaust systems in the past that I've installed personally, and I'll tell you some of these name brand. I've seen. There's one in particular where the welds look like my daughter when she was in uh, what second grade could have welded those things up. And people pay some big bucks for that stuff, but the quality was good, the thickness of the metal, the fit and finish, I mean, it, it worked out really nice. I'm impressed and uh, I'll give it an Ostar's Cars approval, which you guys know I have high quality standards on stuff like that. So uh, I wanna thank Matt for letting me film up there at m and Automotive. Uh, it was great, you know, having that lift made this job much easier. Like I said, I think earlier in the video, you could do it at home. You can lay on your back, but you know how that goes. It, it'll be a little bit extra effort, but in this case, I think it's well worth it. So I know my buddy Joe was smiling ear to ear when he got it. Loves the sound of it. I've personally been in the car going down the road and uh, it's it does. It sounds really good. It sounds real nice. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you like my voiceover, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you like the video in general, let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Questions, all that good stuff right down there. So check me out on Instagram. It's OzStar1. Facebook is OzStar. Right here on YouTube, OzStar's Car. So I thank you for stopping in and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.